Has MMT, modern monetary theory, infected central banks? It's, uh, I'm telling you, man, it's almost by design. This whole thing is almost by design. So let's read this from Thornburg. Uh, I've been a fan of Thornburg for a while. Um, actually, a long time, as a matter of fact. But uh, this is an article, Dateline January 2021, by uh, Charles Roth, Global Markets Editor. So let's read this. Um, the answer, of course, is yes. Uh, this, don't let any crisis go to waste when it comes to advancing the cause of big government and less freedom. Except for the elites, of course. It's a big party and you ain't in it. Um, have, mar have major central bankers and fiscal authorities effectively pursued MMT in practice, if not in name, as debt monetization has lost its stigma? Equity investors cheer weaker than expected economic data and dire COVID uh, public health updates amid expectations of increased policy response. You see that? Equity investors cheer bad crap on the COVID front uh, because of expectations of increased policy response. What's increased policy response? Oh, keep reading. Who else cheers bad uh, data on COVID? Oh, it'd be the big government regulators. Now they're saying we need two masks, not one, because one apparently didn't work. So two, that would be the saving grace. My wife is just telling me in France, they don't want you talking to your neighbor on the train or talking on your cell phone because the mask uh, mandates have worked, uh, because the, uh, the social distancing, the lockdowns have obviously worked. Uh, just the whole thing is just such freaking crazy, man. Um, Central bank uh, asset purchases push investors into risky assets and raise prices on investment grade bonds, of which the global stock with negative yields has ballooned to 18 trillion, 18 trillion in global bonds with negative yields. Valuations are trickier than ever in equity and bond markets. Exactly. How do you, I mean, how do you value stuff when the freaking these are inflated? Top central banks are already engaging, at least in theory, short-term modern monetary theory, says one of Thornburg's portfolio managers. Uh, he notes that major central bank balance sheets have already expanded more than $10 trillion in 2020. Undeniably, we're in monetizing, zet, uh, monetizing debt. Uh, U.S. fiscal stimulus has hit one-fifth of GDP, while Federal Reserve monetary injections of 29% of GDP mean that the total U.S. policy support may reach half of the country's economic output this year. And more is on the way in Europe and elsewhere, as top monetary authorities appear ready to leverage central banks' balance sheets for social and environmental policy goals. Isn't that funny? Uh, in, in addition to their discrete monetary policy objectives. Huh, it's almost like this is one big plan to make sure that we all go green. While consumer spending and savings rates are both higher than they were pre-COVID, consumer spending and savings rates are both higher? I don't know about that. What are the economic and financial market risks in the rapid expansion of global debt? Will inflation follow the virus's initial deflationary impact? How should fixed income portfolios, which face particular risk from potential inflation, be positioned for a likely economic rebound in 2020? What does normalization look like beyond the rebound? Uh, such dire headlines, such market jubilance. Uh, is that the, uh, hold on just a second. Yeah, we were talking about this. Um, bad news is good news as markets tend to look through current conditions of the usually explanatory nuggets of conventional wisdom. But how far into the future are investors actually looking? Many are tactically positioning for a 2021 recovery, few by vaccine rollouts. I am still amazed how many people are putting their hope in a vaccine. It's the weirdest thing. I was talking to a guy today. It's like, it just, it's the weirdest thing to me. Like, oh, the vaccine will save us all. I, I, uh, I, look, I'm not saying it will. I don't know. But it's just the, the idea that they put this name vaccine and all of a sudden we're all freaking, it's uh, we're all in happy land. Look at me. I'm in happy land, is to quote Homer. It's weird, man. It's just weird to me. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, comparisons against 2020 numbers will be easy because 2020 looks so bad. We're going to see where Finney is. He's uh, on the prowl trying to bite my shirt. He loves his shirt right here. Um, my I love CO2 shirt. Finney loves it. Maybe he doesn't like CO2. Now, uh, not too many investors are looking that far down the road and watching out the inevitable, inevitable potholes ahead. While global growth and corporate pro profits are set to rebound in 2020, how much upside is left for stocks, not just in the U.S., but globally? Uh, the MSCI ACWI index has been hitting record highs since November. If stocks are priced to perfection, what happens if perfection proves elusive? either because prices have outrun fundamentals or the macro scenario isn't as supportive as expected. 
The signals from flat to negative risk-free rates are distorted by major central bank asset purchases, which push investors into risky assets and pump up prices on risk-free sovereign and high-grade corporate bonds. The global stock of negative yielding investment grade bonds has ballooned to 18 trillion. What if all the debt monetization ultimately leaves an economic conditions more challenging with a global debt overhang far more towering than it was before the COVID rampage around the world? What's the probability that in a couple of years, a global economy is back in an environment of low inflation, low interest rates, and low growth, i.e. Japan, or that long dormant inflation roars back to life? Have major central bankers and fiscal authorities contracted modern monetary theory and practice? Well, the answer is yes, because they're already engaging, as we talk about. Um, we've seen central bank balance sheets. We already talked about that. The reality is we won't actually try to pay it back. Exactly. We're not paying back the debt, man. I did a video probably a year ago. So that we've had debt as going back to like 1928. And uh, the uh, the editors of various uh, newspapers like, we're, we're banking up future generations. We're never paying back the debt. Uh, we won't actually try to pay it back, and therefore we're currently closer to MMT than we've ever been. Like I've been saying, we're already at MMT, man. I mean, we've been at MMT for years, man. I mean, without question. The Institute of International Finance reckons total global debt has surged more than $15 trillion this year and is on track to reach $277 trillion, or 365% of world GDP by the end of 2020. While all segments, household, non-financial, corporates, the financial sector, and governments have increased their indebtedness in 2020, advanced economy public sectors have been especially aggressive. Global public debt rose more than uh, 13% to about $60 trillion in the third quarter. The U.S. posted the biggest increase in its public debt, which rose 25% in the period of 127% of GDP. In the uh, 2008 financial crisis, the U.S. fiscal stimulus amounted to $8 billion, but the real bazooka came from... Uh, the zero lower bound interest rate policy and asset purchases, which quintupled its balance sheet from over $900 billion to $4 trillion in 2014. Um, more is on the way in Europe as, uh, and elsewhere. As central bankers stray from the traditional ballywax of price and foreign exchange stability, facilitating market liquidity and efficient payment system of supervising bank operations. While the Fed also has a mandate to foster full employment, and the Europe Central Bank, ECB, is also tasked with supporting the general economic, economic policies of the EU, both institutions have been wading into social and environmental policy discussions. Oh, uh, boy, here we go. Janet Yellen. <laughs> the past few decades of widening inequality can be summed up as significant income and wealth gains for those at the very tippy top, says Janet, and stagnant living sta standards for the majority. I think it's appropriate to ask whether this trend is compatible with values rooted in our nation's history. Among them, high-value Americans uh, have traditionally placed on a quality of opportunity. Um, uh, then uh, this whole thing of inequality is just like, I, I mean, without question, I mean, you got a, a top 1%. The issue is those people are not the same. They're just not. They, people come and go all the time. That's what makes capitalism so great. You take a risk. Sometimes that risk will pay off. Sometimes you're going to be bankrupt. It happens all the time. Uh, in the U.S., this is evident retail spending and durable goods purchases as well as deposits at commercial banks. In fact, the sharp rise in deposits only leveled off after su supplemental government transfer payments expired over the summer. But M2 money supply continues to spike amid Fed asset purchases of roughly $120 billion a month. Rock bottom and negative benchmark rates effectively enable the pursuit of MMT through debt monetization. As defenders contend that only real constraint in the economy with a hard currency like the U.S., is productive capacity. Once exceeded, inflation should finally materialize and authorities can then bring, they can deploy taxes and regulation to bring prices back in alignment because we don't have enough regulation as is. All right, uh, I'm, I'm just saying this. So basically what's happening here is, uh, uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we've, I mean, look, they, their argument is, is completely valid until it's not. I mean, that's just a fact with MMT people. Like, look, what's the big deal? We've had debt as long as the eye could see. We've basically been a, a minor MMT for freaking, I mean, for years, since LBJ, essentially. Um, and the, the economy's grown and grown and grown. But it hadn't grown in the seven, the, the, 60, the late 60s and, until 82. It really didn't. It wasn't until deregulation kicked in when we had uh, cheaper goods because uh, globalization, I mean, that's a fact. Globalization did serve a purpose. Question is, has, has that purpose already been uh, achieved and now we can kind of cut back? I mean, I don't know. I'm, like, at the end of the day, it's not, I don't want to debate that here, but 
man, the idea that MMT is new is just it's freaking silly. Man. It's Keynesian. It's all it is. Just John Maynard Keynes. It's mercantilism. And we've been talking about this. Bastiat in the 1700s of France is the same thing. At the end of the day, though, there, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, you can only inflate so much. You can only have zero interest rates so much. You can only go negative for so much. At some point, people say, I, I, just a bubble of birth. I don't know when that will be or even if it will be. I have no idea. It's frustrating, though, because there's no way to know all the other, other than to say we are already in MMT. At some point, this cannot, you cannot uh, borrow yourself to prosperity. It doesn't work like that. I mean, I look, I get it. Some people can. They can leverage their home. They can leverage bonds. Basically, they can short stuff, essentially, on borrowed money. Uh, that, and some people make buy. The vast majority won't. They'll get stuck holding the wet bag. And that's, I, I don't know when or where, how it's going to happen, but it certainly is going to happen. Um, and then the, the, the other point of that, though, is inflation destroys fixed income for bondholders or mortgage holders. So if you own a mortgage, I, you don't, you're not the payer of the mortgage. You're the recipient of the mortgage. So you're the borrower. Inflation loves you. The lender inflation hates. Well, inflation will eat, eat alive the lender, but the inflate. So basically saying, why would I pay off my mortgage if I think inflation is coming? Yeah. All right. We'll save that for another video, but, uh, it's a challenging time. I, I don't know how, I have no idea where this is shaking out. It's just, it's a, uh, it's a concern, but what do you do? What do you do? I don't know. All right. We'll see you.